Welcome aboard. This is Clarity of Narrative. I'm Tracy Burns, formerly a freelance editor, now working full-time with LMBPN. And I'm Lynn Stigler, and I have been managing the editing consortium at LMBPN for the last four and a half years. And uh, I have done over a thousand books for them. At my highest, I was doing about one and a half million words a month. So um, it was, I'm a fast editor. So. <laughs> Um, and we were producing a lot. We still produce about a book a day. But anyway, and then we dragged uh, Tracy into this mess, and now she's uh, she, she's doing about that million words I wasn't doing. I'm not doing anymore. Yes, we did cross the million words per month mark. It was a bucket list Ooh. I did not have written down. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what we're saying is we see a lot of narrative. Yes, we do. So Craig Martell's bright idea was that we uh, do this presentation. So now, did my slide change? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. We're, this is our our, our solution to fifteen thousand uh, dollar for the conference projectors in the room. So this is what we get. All right. So what do we mean by clarity of narrative? Readability. First and foremost, readers need to be able to understand what you are telling them. And then the compelling storytelling. We have, I just edited a book actually for Craig Martell with a co-author where I, he cut out 3,000 words, then I cut out 5,000 words because the story was there, but the words were hiding it. <laughs> so we want to get you out of that and that goes to the easy reader com comprehension. Right, and then there's the story itself where you need to engage readers. If you have excess verbiage in there, they're going to have to wade through it to get to the portion of the story that's going to grab them. And that's not a good thing when you're looking for sales and KU reads, etc. And don't be, KU, excess verbiage does not translate into your next book being read on KU, so do not be misled. Right. Okay, my husband is Mark Stigler. He's given a couple of presentations here. We swiped uh, this slide from him wholesale. He gave a presentation on Tuesday about clarity of narrative. It's still the same. It says the editor. I can help you if you want me to. Oh, that'd be great. Let me get back to where I was and then this. Yeah. He didn't say this was perfect. <coughs> There we go. If you could just click the first button, but first, button. yeah, this one, yes, okay. that, <laughs> that. So okay. Audience participation. Here we go. You didn't Here sign up for it, but thank you for doing thank it. Thank you. No, yes. <laughs> so, as Mark says, what is narrative? Um, it doesn't really have to do with the plot or the beat or the actual words that you write. It is the events that bring your story to fruition. And um, and he also says beware of using too many words for the sake of Kindle Unlimited. Yes. These uh, these slideshows are also up on Facebook. Thank you. So the next question everybody asks is, how can an editor enhance clarity? Let me preface that by saying LMBPN gets a lot of novice authors, and so they make every novice author mistake in the book. We, as their editors, are quite used to just flat rewriting your book if we need to. <laughs> so we do a lot of, as we say here, cutting out unnecessary verbiage. So we are coming to exposing, coming from the position of exposing the bones of story and making it the best it can be. And not just in our opinion, you have to agree, this bottom line is your book. So, Okay, so most of you can't read these, so I'm going to read it out loud, which I never ever do with, uh, pre with, with, with presentations, but he told Lenora to hold by raising his arm vertically to head height with his fist clenched. Okay. He signaled with a raised fist. Lenora froze. You know, that's all you need. He lifted his head and tipped the cup back, allowing him to take in a mouthful of the beautiful hot nectar with an unnecessary comma. He savored a mouthful of the hot nectar. Less is more. I'll let you do the next one because it's so fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Annabelle, Annabelle and Tara ran up the length of the Dark One, cutting through his arms as they entered the path of the lost, setting flames to the Dark One's hulking body as it rose. An unholy screech echoing out into the air as Abby flew across the Dark One, firing her plasma cannons. Tina and Alex flying above, launching ether fire at the Dark One. I'm going to throw him under the bus. This is Rami Vance. Yes. <laughs> Notice that nowhere in there was there a period, only commas. So it became... Annabelle and Tara ran up his length, cutting through his arms. They had entered the path of the lost, and Annabelle set fire to the Dark One's hulking body. He screeched as Abby flew across him, firing her plasma cannons. Gina launched ether fire at him. And then Hammersmith was a labyrinth, and only a few knew the ways and passes of every nook and cranny. Kindle Unlimited much? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it was a labyrinth, period. Talking, and only a few knew it, its ways or something. You, you don't need. You don't need the passes of every nook and cranny. If it's a labyrinth, we're, we're in Got it. and convoluted. Got it. Okay. Then we come up to removing redundancy which you just heard a couple of examples of. Here but Chris approached the two who stopped their arguing when he approached. <laughs> Chris approached the two and they stopped arguing, or as Chris approached the two, they stopped arguing. That's all you need. I'll let you take the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is another of Robbie Vance's. Alex opened her palm and let Jollies take a seat in it. Trust me, Jollies, you're the best person for the job, Alex said, wondering how much Jollies actually wanted to hear compared to how much she wanted to hear it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Alex opened her palm and let Jollies take a seat in it. Trust me, you're the best person for the job, the writer said, wondering how much the fairy actually wanted to hear. That's all you need. <laughs> She explained the mechanism to the pilot, who looked like he didn't understand the explanation. You don't need explained and explanation. You have to be very careful of that. We often get the same word in three different forms in the same sentence. Yes. In this case, all you needed was she explained the mechanism to the pilot. He didn't understand. And then there's one of my particular favorites. Or who looked like he didn't understand. True. My personal favorite, spinning in a slow circular motion. As opposed to a rectangular motion. <laughs> and there's also the question of, are you spinning while you're going in a circle? Do please try it. I'd like to see how dizzy you get. <laughs> OK, one of the things that's happening is the trend toward every book going to audio. Uh, there is, uh, we said this in our last presentation about um, in, uh, working with an editor, there is AI audio coming and it's going to be very affordable for pretty much every book to go to audio. So when you're writing, think about the poor schmuck in traffic who is listening to the horns honking around them and trying to decipher your literary masterpiece sentence while, um, and, he, and saying, wait, what? <laughs> they can't go back up and reread the the, the paragraph that addressed this. So, so be careful that you're not um, writing excess words. So the sentence is, Bianca turned to face the young magicals beside the dining table and lifted her vodka soda with lemon toward the glass double doors and the sheer cream curtains hanging in perfect folds on either side. Okay. <laughs> Don't need pretty much any of those words after young magicals beside the dining table. The rest of it is should be done elsewhere or not at all. And definitely not all as one sentence. Please. No. Yes. <laughs> then um, things that throw readers out of the story. My particular bug is present participle phrases. Some people call them gerunds. Words that end in, do, in, da, in ing. Those are ongoing actions. I actually wrote a paper about it with one of my co-editors, and if you give me your email address afterward, I will send it to you, because it talks about how to fix that, how to identify it, and how to fix it. What that means is that you are writing actions that can't happen in parallel. So opening the door, he stepped through it. Okay. 
My favorite one is she walked gracefully to the altar, sinking to her knees. Can you both walk and sink to your knees? If so, please, please do it on video because we want to see. <laughs> um, your favorite? Another favorite. Nikki scrambled in her coat pocket, releasing the empty mag and trying to push another one in. No, just no. <laughs> I, I, personally, if you're enough of a magician to scramble in your coat pocket while you're in a firefight, I'd like to see it. Well, we're in Vegas, so. Again, that could be. Okay. More mistakes that uh, throw readers out of the story. It sounds good in your head, but what does it mean? She turned back to the path and saw several eyes looming out of the growing gloom. Yellow ringed pupils and the sound of hungry snarls. Okay. Sentence fragment. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, using the wrong, but uh, you know, this was a horror author who thought it, it set the mood. That's nice. Um, so, using the wrong word. He had a physique that belied quite a bit of time spent sculpting in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, it, it belied it. Then he looked like um, Char not Charles Atlas, the other guy, the 90 pound weakling that, that we all had in the comic book. Those of us who were old had in comic books when we were young. It weighed heavily on her conscious. <laughs> no, really? No. And then also make sure the action is possible. She was wearing a face mask and brushing her teeth. No, really, she's not. And if she is, you need to indicate that she pulled her face mask down first. Yes. Uh, I have seen a number of such impossible actions in science fiction, in fantasy, in urban fantasy, in romance, and erotica, because I have edited some of that as well. Be very careful of how you're positioning your characters for certain things. They just don't work anatomically. Yes. And usually body parts are fairly well behaved. The stomp of murderous feet. No, feet don't really generally murder anyone. Her eyes glared at him. Uh, eyes don't really have an independent ability to do anything. She glared at him, but her eyes didn't. So. Actions in the middle of dialogue. Blah, blah, he laughed, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Makes it real hard for your narrator. Yes. So again, going back to audio. So it would be he laughed, blah, blah, and blah, blah, blah. Regarding action fight scenes, this comes from our co-editor, Judah Rain, who lives in South Africa. We are an international organization. She could not be here because no, they're not letting anybody out of South Africa. Keep track of your players and make sure the act is possible. You can't kill someone with a sword thrust if you already hacked off their head. And you can't dance nimbly away from the attack if you're on your knees. So it's especially, um, it, we see that a lot in action scenes. Yes. So. Word choices matter. Some things that are not synonymous, but that we see multiple times per story, regardless of whether you're a new author or experienced. The ground is not the same as the floor, is not the same as the deck. If you're in a ship or on a ship. Right. If you are inside a building, unless it's an earthen floor barn, you are on a floor. If you are outside, you are on the ground or on the earth. If you are on a ship or on a raised wooden structure, it is most likely a deck. They and your editor will get annoyed enough with you to charge you more. <laughs> Not to mention, if you are doing your edit acceptances, they will leave you tart comments about this. Yes. Concrete is not the same as cement. <laughs> cement is an ingredient of concrete. It is not the final product you walk on or bang your head against when it's a wall. Bullets are not the same as rounds. A round contains a bullet, but it, uh, it, is, it also has the charge in the case and all those things. So um, your gun nuts will tell you that, and they will, they will throw them out of the story. Yes. 
dictation. Everybody's friend for trying to do things quickly. Everybody's enemy when it comes to inserting extra words, using incorrect words, adding words you didn't intend to put in there, and making you lose your train of thought mid-sentence and doubling up on phrases. So, she went the to the because you stumbled when you were dictating. Missing preposition, she went the. Um, homonyms, site versus site, the building site versus site, the site on your rifle. Console versus console, taught in a classroom versus the rope was taught. That kind of thing. And we, your editors, would expect you to go through and catch those, whether the dictation saved you time or not. Um, we have to catch them if you don't, and please try, uh, uh, I'm gonna stick in one of my, my pleas here. As an author, if you put your book aside, go back to it five or 10 days later, and go do another pass, because you're gonna catch a lot of the stupids, including these kind, so. Right. And if you find that reading from front of the manuscript to back, you are missing some of these, read it from back to front. I guarantee you, your eyes will see it differently. You will catch things that leave you doing this. So, how did I miss that? Yes. Yes. Some more word choices matter. Multiple words, replace it with one well-chosen word. Concise, adds to your clarity. Multiple words for KU point of view doesn't really fly if you want your readers to enjoy your story and come back and read your next book. Give them something that they don't have to wade through the extra. A number of becomes several or many. A variety of becomes various. Somebody doesn't have to start to or begin to or try to. They just do it. You don't need those extra words. <clears throat> And then we get to talking about the narrator. The narrator in your story. Not another character, unless you're in first person point of view. Your narrator should speak properly. This is not the time to be putting in the slang, etc. That is for dialogue or a little bit looser personalization for your first person POV. Third person, your narrator speaking properly. This is someone telling the story as opposed to when the dialogue comes in. Dialogue, you can speak any way you wish. Right. So. Dialogue is where you're going to put in your slang, your accents, etc. Your very informal or formal ways of speaking depending on your character. Keep your narrator's voice consistent. If I'm going through your book and you have a narrator that is a fairly formal way of relating things, and all of a sudden you're speaking informal slang, I'm going to flag you hard for it. Because that is a major shift in your book and it will throw readers completely out of your story. <laughs> and so in other words, don't introduce slang where you're, you're you know, previously speaking. Um, don't all of a sudden um, have the narrator speaking like an old friend or something like that. It, right. it just doesn't. And if you do decide mid-story that you need to shift how your narrator is relating things, then for the Lord's sake, please go back to the beginning of your book and make it consistent with the later stuff. Okay, now, we're going to say that this is the first time we've done this presentation, so it's a little bit shorter than we would have liked it to be, so we're going to have a lot of time for questions if you have any. Yep? Could you speak a little bit further on the action in the middle of dialogue. So my understanding is that it's okay to use action in the middle of dialogue if it helps to find who is speaking. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yes, um, It, but first of all, dialogue, you should have one paragraph per speaker. Right. Okay, so you should know who's speaking. And unless you have multiple people. Then you have a dialogue per person, a paragraph per person. Right, but which person is speaking? You see what I mean? Yes, but the, haven't you already told? Well, I'm saying in the middle of. Uh, 
she, oh, let's see. The example we're using for don't put it in the middle of a sentence or a paragraph is if you are not ending a sentence, showing me an action to identify, and then starting another sentence. Right. If you, oh, okay. Right. So, we're saying you don't put an action in the middle of a continuing sentence. Then I'm okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ending a sentence, having an action, and starting a new, you're another fine. Another sentence. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. I'm forever having trouble with blue or sticky words. What's your position on those? Speak, give me an example. Um, it's where the most common words like in and while and they're repeated. So, so the question is uh, having trouble with repeating common words. It depends on which words. First of all, don't, don't start sentences with but and then and words like that. Um, Obviously, in and while are going to have to be used whenever they can need to be used. But don't con try to rethink your writing to the point where you don't have to, like, you aren't going to have continued prepositional phrases with in for a while or whatever. Um, people don't tend to speak in multiple prepositional phrases. So you want to shift the pace of the writing by, by having a declarative sentence or something in between them. Okay, thank you. All right. Yep. I have a lot of things to right now. Could you um, yeah, pull your mask sure. down? <laughs> My editor said it was okay to start with an ING as long as it's about one per chapter, and as long as whatever they're doing is something that they can do at the same time. That, as if it's something you can do at the same time, then then that's great. But if you can't do it, the app, rolling her eyes, she blinked. Right, gotcha. But walking toward the enemy, she drew her gun. Oh yeah, that's totally okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That can be done simultaneously. Right. Okay. You can walk and do something else at the same time, like drawing a gun. Uh, those of us talented enough can walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> Others, it's debatable, <laughs> but you can't roll your eyes and still peer at someone. I can't you, walk and shop at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're trying to spin around in a circle and still keep your eye on a target in the far distance, you're going to lose sight of it eventually. There's that point in the arc where we just don't have eyes in the back Wait, of our Wait, now ballet dancers can do it because they whip their heads around. Right. And if, or if you have 360 degree goggles, yes, you could do it, but that needs to be part of your story versus me standing out here in the corner. Sooner or later, I'm going to lose sight of that control panel. Okay. Uh, but, but I had a, I just recently edited a story where they literally had three present participles in the same sentence. So action, comma, walking and spinning and talking, you know, kind of thing. So. Those are bad examples. You can walk and talk, but walking and spinning and and um, and uh, peering. No, I can't think of a verb. Anyway, three. You get my idea. And and so I had to correct that sentence to be actually two sentences, so that they could have because you don't want four actions in one sentence. So walking, spinning, and walking. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. You, can't, you just can't do that. And so be, be aware of things they can't do. I, I said this in the last presentation, but at one point LMVPN was going to not under LMVPN publish some erotica because there's you know money in it. And, and not only was the erotica badly written, but it was impossible to do what they uh, had written. So uh, don't, don't do that to your poor characters. You know, and then another thing that I actually ran into in the series I'm currently editing, someone has their hands bound to a table in front of them. Now there is some slack in the chains between the manacles and the bolt on the table, but can you, with a very short chain, do this to slap your shoulder? Chances are probably not if you're keeping them this close. So what action can you do to get down to where a character could touch a hand to an opposite shoulder and press on something. Think about things like that. If, you're, if your character cannot physically do it, your readers are going to be sitting there doing 
what? And tried it. Your family won't laugh much. I had this one author who had continued series of physical actions. I was sore after I edited her books because I would keep trying what it was she was doing so to make sure that the actions could happen in the order in which she wrote them. So and it was so continuous. My husband was like, why are you holding your neck like that? I said, because I'm tired and I hurt. <laughs> We won't talk about popping a kneecap out of joint trying to replicate a fight scene position. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but your editor should be doing this for you. I mean, they should be making sure. If you didn't make sure, they should be making sure because your fans will call you on it. Oh, yes, they will. So, and please use magazine instead of clip if you're writing guns. There are a couple that do use clip, but by and large, it is magazine. The gun nuts absolutely will call you on the carpet and drag you over the broken shards of glass. Yes. Jim. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so um, anything else we can answer for you? And again, we're sorry. We, we thought we had more material in this, but we don't. Um, I'm a newbie at this. So. Yes. What are the most common mistakes that beginners make that you would, you know, advise someone who's new at this to avoid doing? You don't use said. Okay. If you can identify a speaker without using a dialogue tag at all, do it. She left. Don't need a dialogue tag. You know who's going speaking after that. Um, the fairy side, whatever. Oh, another big mistake is one character constantly shrugs, rubs their neck, sighs, blinks, has, has actions that uh, throughout the book. And we have to figure out alternative actions because they are so re repetitive. Now, I'm not talking about characteristic ways of speaking. I'm talking about physical actions <coughs> to identify the character. Gosh, what else? Um, uh, we'll get to you in just a second. Another repetitive action that I see a lot is, oddly enough, walking. There are multiple ways to say you're going someplace. They don't have to be running. They don't have to be sprinting. They don't have to be hopping. They don't have to be crawling. But you can head someplace. You can move. You can shift. You can shuffle. Depending on your scenario, you can stride, you can pace, you can step. Yeah. There are multiple ways to say actions, so be aware that you may fall into a pattern of walking somewhere or striding somewhere and it becomes repetitive and we're looking for ways to weed that out so that the readers aren't getting clubbed over the head with the same word and action. There's a program called Smart Edit and apparently Pro Writing Aid both that will um, will also will tell you the words that you have that are repetitive. Yes. So it's it's in your interest to use those. Yeah. We had a question in the audience. So. <laughs> <laughs> so a repetitive action, it's more a function of how you're using it. To describe it rather than a function of the character having a specific tick, such as being a chain smoker and fiddling with their lighter. If those are characteristics... Wait, wait, can repeat the question? Character ticks versus repetitive actions that are non-character ticks or traits. If your character has a nervous habit of chain smoking or fiddling with a lighter, then yes, I expect to see that fairly often, but not overwhelmingly so. If it is simply a matter of you're deep in the flow and you forgot to go back when you did another pass and change some of the racing toward an enemy or racing away from a thug or some such thing like that, then yes, I will flag and change that. But a character trait on the other hand, is something where, as long as it's not overdone. Yeah, we'll not, he fiddled with, with his lighter, paragraph, 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 fiddling with his lighter, he, paragraph, paragraph, 
And then he fiddled with his lighter. Right. Yeah. In that same, same vein, I've been doing something that you make me question. Um, sometimes to give them activities, so I'm not saying said and laugh, I'll add something like they're drinking tea. Should I not be um, inputting some kind of action? So the, the question is, I, having them do alternate actions versus so that they're not to intend to break up that, but then do you get too heavily on the alternate actions? Right. There's a lot of alternate actions. So, took a sip of the tea, yeah, you can have that through one scene, but unless that character is a chain tea drinker like me, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you, you probably aren't going to have it every scene. But it's okay to add stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that will also help add to your setting for the story. You know, if you're establishing you know, sitting in an armchair or something like that, this person's a habitual reader and has a, a mug of tea by the side, then yes, they are periodically going to sip from that mug. Yeah. Uh, I guess not entirely dissimilar, but uh, catchphrases. Uh, you know, Captain Marvel saying Shazam, uh, the thing saying it's clobbering time. Uh, is there. I've even seen cases in the comics where other characters will say, hey man, you say that a lot. Um, you know, sort of lampshading it, but is there some formula for how often is too often, or is it just too dependent on the needs of the individual story? If it's clobbering us over the head, and your readers have read more of your stories, it's really gonna hit them over the head, or worse, they're gonna disregard what you're saying, and you don't want them to do that. So. I would say judicious use of it. I have edited a few books where there were instances that got taken out because they were becoming too prevalent. Once your character's catchphrase is known, then yes, you can have some fun with it. You know, if, if he gets super excited and that's all he can think of to say, your other Captain characters... Captain Marvel said, sh, and then there's an M dash, and his friends glared at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you can absolutely lampoon your own characters within the story to make fun of how often it says, but don't necessarily say the word every time. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Or you know what I'm going to say here, you know, or something like that. I'll be back. Yeah. How do you feel about adverbs? Out. <laughs> Out. Someone, unless you're in the Princess Bride, someone is 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 generally completely dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't need to limp slightly. You don't need to speak softly. You can whisper or murmur or whatever. Half whispering is one of my favorite. What? <laughs> you know, um, they whispered or they didn't. They, I don't know. It, I, I don't think adverbs add anything. I have an author that adds now and already to almost everything and now and already come out of almost everything. So. Um, they're generally a known quantity, so um, I will pull out, pull them out unless they really add something. And just being there for the sake of, of KU is not adding anything. Yeah. It needs to either add, specifically add value to what you are talking about, describing, or saying in dialogue or don't use it at all let's look at um well okay some things we correct automatically just because we're a clarity of narrative uh, looked to is not correct it's looked at unless you are looking to someone for leadership but look to the girl is not correct looked at the girl always try and is always corrected to try to um Pointed at, not pointed to. Let's see, what else? Looked over at. Looked over at, take out over. Shouted out, no, you just shout. Blurted out, called out, you just call. Crouch down, crouching is inherently down. The same with kneeling and squatting. Yes, again, I have a thoughts on editing document. If anybody wants it, give me your email afterward and I will send it to you because it takes in my experience from all these uh, novice author any scripts um, and so all the words you can leave out and make your book better I'm assuming you have the same position for double adjectives and 
You know, sometimes the double adjectives do add something, but not three or four. The gigantic immense watermelon adds nothing. The glowing red immense watermelon may. Questions? We'll let you go and get a longer break. I'm very sorry that it was shorter than it should have been. Hopefully we did give you some useful information. And I'm on Facebook if you ever need to get me. I'm so. on Facebook as well, readily available. Just shoot us questions if you have them. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.